The Koch brothers have a new political action committee, a new PAC, which was very recently established. This new PAC is specifically targeting youth who will be eligible to purchase health insurance through the state insurance exchanges starting next month under the Affordable Care Act. The intention with this PAC is to tell young people that they don't actually need health insurance, even though there's a financial penalty for not enrolling in health insurance. And the penalty, according to this PAC, is cheaper and better for you than health insurance. How this new PAC, called Generation Opportunity, will actually manage to convince youth of this, we can't be sure. But what we are sure of is that Generation Opportunity is funded and operated by the same people who brought you the model legislation for mandatory transvaginal ultrasounds for women who decided to get an abortion. And this model legislation has been more or less adopted in some 13 states. It gets better though. Generation Opportunity has, in their efforts to educate youth to forego health insurance, started a television ad campaign. Watch this. Okay, let's have a look. the people who brought you legally required transvaginal ultrasounds, we present to you the campaign to get government out of healthcare. The Koch brothers are certainly giving this anti-health insurance thing their all, but what do you expect from the fourth and fourth richest men in the United States? When David Koch was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1992, he bought MIT a new cancer research facility, and he expects you to do the same. But that's not the end for the Koch brothers or the rest of the anti-health insurance lobby. Oh no. They keep pushing for more. Misinformation attempts to prevent high caliber personalities and organizations from promoting or educating the public on what the Affordable Care Act actually does, not to mention the attack advertisements and made up facts and figures. The conservatives are not silent on this law. They want it repealed, and they want it repealed so badly that the House has voted 41 times to repeal it. 41 votes to repeal since March 2010, when President Obama signed the bill into law. Even now, the House Republicans are preparing for yet another vote to repeal the Affordable Care Act, while the long overdue budget and farm bills slip by the wayside, and the government prepares yet again for the possibility of a total shutdown on the 1st of October. Another vote to repeal health care reform is currently being proposed, and House Speaker John Boehner will probably put it before the House before too long. All the while, a pending use of force authorization regarding Syria has been largely forgotten. Since the votes to repeal have nowhere to go after passing the House, there are increasing proposals to defund the government, the entire government, if the White House doesn't take the act off the books. This political brinksmanship, however, is going nowhere fast. Obamacare is a law, and it is here to stay. At least, that is, until the next Republican president takes office and repeals it immediately upon taking office. Not because Republicans think health care reform or health insurance is inherently bad, but because the current party line is, by all appearances and conduct, anti-Democrat. In many cases, that's all this is. A game to show the Democrats who's boss, and that they think the Republicans can do health reform better. But when your health reform plan is called go to the ER, that's a difficult pitch to make. That was news things for tonight. Thanks for watching.